Carla, I work here in Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. I'm going to tell you quickly about ChartGo. ChartGo is a free, online, very simple chart making tool. So sometimes you don't want to mess with the complexity and power of Excel. You just want a little pie chart or a little bar graph, a little line chart. You, you just want something simple. You have the data in front of you. You just want to plug it in. Boom. Have your little pretty chart that you can dump into a document or share with somebody. And this website will enable you to do that for free. Sorry, I'm not really showing you like a visual of it, but you just go, you can select pie, bar, graph, dump in your data, make your X and Y axes, you get some limited color options, click the button that says create chart, and it'll make this pretty little chart for you. That you can then embed in a website or a blog, you can share, you can save it in like a variety of formats, you can put it on Facebook, and you can just have a link to it. So you could actually just activate the link and send it out to your group and you could have it for at least three months. They, they say if somebody doesn't use it for three months, then it goes away. But cool, free, easy, easy to use. Try it out. Uh, hi, I'm Donna Eckert. I'm from K-State West Race in Manhattan. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Vine. Vine's an app. Uh, right now it's only available for iPhones, but the Android one is coming soon as well. Um, it's a very short video app, and the easiest way to explain it is that Vine is to YouTube as Twitter is to blogging. <coughs> you have six seconds of video on the indiv individual Vine you make, and if you think that's ridiculous, think about the first time you heard of Twitter and thought, what could I possibly say of value in 140 characters? Now you know what you can say in 140 characters. Vine, six seconds of video. I'm convinced you could use it to show people how to log in, how to renew their books, how to find things in the stacks, and I'm busily convincing people at my library to do that now. Um, it has social aspects that integrates with Twitter and Facebook, and you can share your videos out anywhere, so it's pretty simple to use. Here. I'm the messenger for Raspberry Pi for my grandkids. Yes, I do have a library background and I'm on a library board, but Raspberry Pi is the thing that they are so enthused about. I tried to find information about it, came up here and find out there is a lot of information that I could not find that will be coming out. All right, the next thing I want you to know <coughs> starts at $35 for the basic what you see right there on the board. So it's right, it's right here. You can use sticky tape, put it back on your TV, and you can load your movies that you've taken off the web and play them. It goes on and on and on and on and on. You can go ahead and take, hook it up to one of your appliances at home and see how much electricity it's using. And tons and tons and tons of things that you can do. Now, my best tip is to go ahead and there's going to be a blog given to you. And get on that and you can watch a four minute little video of exactly what you can do with this. <coughs> they also sold me this and I don't know why. I'll <laughs> <laughs> ask my grandkids. <coughs> okay, why did I purchase Minecraft for our library? Because Alfie and Tracy said to. <laughs> well, they had good reasons. It has a lot of educational potential. It helps kids develop spatial and problem-solving skills, collaboration, and creativity. It also creates the opportunity for group and social learning. Minecraft is all about building on a lot of different levels. We talk a lot about makerspace and libraries these days, and this is like a virtual makerspace. It should be a good investment as we use it for special game lights night. Our like first one is two nights, so tonight is our test. And also throughout the summer with programs for all ages, we feel like it really fits our theme this year. The cost for us was $95, $18 for each uh, license for three public access workstations and $41 for the enhanced software for, or the server. And yes, we needed help setting it up, thanks to Dan, and we'll keep you posted about how it works. Hello, my name is Royce Kitts from Washburn University. The first thing that I'm going to show you today is Tildy. And what Tildy is is a step-by-step -step guide for creating online tutorials. If you <coughs> like sharing recipes, it's one of these things that really walks you through step-by-step -step on how to create it and stuff. 
Um, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, which I think is actually helps you focus in on the content. Um, it uh, integrates with Google Maps, so you can put maps in there. So if you want to give people some instructions on maybe you can stay here, here's a good restaurant, those kinds of things. Um, one of the things that I think it really comes in handy is when you're working the reference desk, you can create a quick tutorial that you can email to a student on how to get into a database and how to find an article. That's what I use it for most often. And I got 12 more seconds, so I'll also add, there's uh, no sign-up required, and each tutorial has its own unique short URL. URL, sorry. Narrable. Okay, this one's awesome. Mother's Day, Mother's Day is coming up. Uh, maybe you don't want to buy her anything. Maybe you don't even want to talk to her, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be songs, right? So, so one of the things that's really awesome about Narrable is you upload some photos, and you can add some... Uh, voiceover, and you can call in and do it. You can use, there's a phone number for it. You can also do it uh, via the computer. And what it does is it allows you to create a narrated um, story, a little narrated story using pictures, and it's awesome. So you can put on all those baby pictures, you know, that you wanted to. And a couple of things real quick is um, you can sign in with just your email or a password. Or if you want to sell your soul and the souls of your friends, you could sign up with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and you can annoy your friends with pop-ups. <laughs> which is why people are on Facebook. All right, now this actually is one that I think um, can come in handy. I know a lot of us work with people who want to print everything off that they see and give to us. And, you know, print, printing is expensive. One of the cool things about Print Eliminator is that it's a bookmarklet. It lives in your browser. You go to a web page that you want to print something off from, and what it'll do is it'll come up with a series of buttons, and you see these three buttons up here. And what you can do is you can remove all the graphics from that web page, but it'll also allow you to go around and remove certain elements from the web page so that you can get this really nice, clean print. One of the really awesome things about it is, for some reason, people like a certain font or a certain font size. And what you can do is you can click on the apply your own style sheet to it so that it'll print things off exactly how you want. So this one's great. Hello. The tip I'd like to share with all of you today is visually. I know that Cynthia talked about this a little bit. Visually, like she said, lets you create visual representations of your data or use existing infographics. Uh, I think it's really neat because you can convince people to do things they don't want to with infographics because nobody can argue with an infographic. <laughs> a specific point of interest to me is the ability to take Google Analytics data for your website, feed it in to Visually, and have it give you that data in a way that's easy to share and read and understand. And that's all, the one, all I've got for Visually. The next thing I'd like to talk about is WordPress Mobile. Primarily because a lot of our cloud websites use WordPress as well as other library websites. Uh, WordPress Mobile is an app that lets you uh, work on your phone or tablet on your posts as well as do some of the administration of your website. Uh, to set it up, it's really, really simple. You just put the URL of your website and then your username and password that you use to log into your website. And then from there, you can post your website on the go, work on drafts, upload media, whatever it is that you, that you need to do for your website. Um, and actually, uh, just now, I'm on my tablet, and I'm going to post these 30 tips to the website. Hi, I'm Melissa Staley. I work here in Topeka. Um, the first tip I wanted to share was about reading free um, advanced digital um, edition copies of books, mostly fiction, but some nonfiction. Um, it's open to many librarians. Um, you write a little review about yourself when you sign up for the services, so publishers can look at your review of yourself and say whether or not you might actually do something with reading their advanced digital copies, like review it for your website or make a collection development decision, those kind of things. NetGalley is currently my favorite, um, but Idolize um, also has um, some great advanced copies that you can get. Basically, you go say, I want this one and this one and this one, and they <coughs> give you approval from the publishers, and then you download them for free months before they come out for the public and read them on your iPad or your iPhone or on your computer or on your tablet. Um, it's kind of awesome. Um, 
I personally only go back and review maybe 10% of them and they still keep approving for me. My next tip is um, pixlr.com. Um, specifically, it's an online photo editing service. Specifically what I like about it, the best trick, um, is to very easily change the layer style on text to make it stand out when it's typed over a picture. Um, that's, a, that's a tool that I go specifically to this program for. So say you need to make a little graphic for your website and you want to put just a little wording over it to make it uh, more effective for the person looking at it, you can type the words uh, in a new layer and change the style of that layer so that it glows from outside of it. And then no matter what picture it's going over, your reader can read those words over the picture. Um, I don't have any fancy editing software if that was an obvious, because I'm not really in that field. But I need to do these things all the time, and it's a really quick way to do it. That's all I have to know. Um, <clears throat> my next tip is to use your smartphone and take pictures of stuff in your library and share them. I know it's kind of an obvious tip, but um, I typically will use my phone and take pictures of displays or take pictures of other cool stuff I see people doing, put it on our website or put it on our Flickr, um, and then try to label it well, say what it is. It expands the reach of your library out more. And then I actually get feedback from other libraries. People are searching for examples online of how libraries do things, and they write and say, oh, that book display was great. Can I use it in my book? And I'm like, um, yeah, it wasn't mine, but let me check. I just put the picture up because it was cool. It acknowledges what your coworkers are doing, and it also spreads that reach um, elsewhere. Of course, you could do that on your Facebook also. It's a great way to get the word out about what you're doing in-house. You may do something awesome in a hallway, and not everybody sees it because not everybody went down that hallway while the awesome thing was happening. And um, I'm a big fan of passive technology. Um, so like you can go to a conference and tell everybody how to run your own trivia night, but it only reaches the people, even if I told you all how to run your own trivia night, um, it only reaches you guys. Um, and you guys don't necessarily care right now. But if you put up an eight-page handout on how to run your own trivia night on your website, people searching when they need that information on how to run a trivia night find it. And I get an email a week from people around the country searching for that information because I say, and I'll share our old questions with you for free, just email me. That's how I know that they're seeing it. Um, so whatever you're doing well that you're willing to share, if you can put that out there, and I'm going to go put the same thing on the script site too. Um, because wherever people are looking for it, if they can find your information, it's way more effective than a conference, even a cool conference like this, um, for people to find the information at the time they need it, which is what brings me. Yeah. So whatever you're doing well, share it, and then I'll be able to find it when I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Helen Plankington from the Back Bookman Library in Holton, and this is a super simple tech tip. And I give credit to Mike Schuel, a patron of our library. When searching for free ebooks, go to Barnes and Noble or Amazon, and in their search uh, window, just type 0, 0.00, as in zero dollars and zero cents, and the result will be hundreds and hundreds of free ebooks. who sent this in doesn't seem to be here. I don't know a whole lot about Symbaloo, but that's why they make Google. I guess it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a homepage that you can use. Um, and so Charlotte Anderson had, had sent this in as a tip, um, but unfortunately she is not here today. So we'll continue on with the rest of the tips. So it was announced that I'm Alex Munn, I'm a reference librarian at Emporia State. It was announced that uh, Google was going to take uh, their Google Reader out of the woodshed. And uh, so I was looking for an alternative for a way to sort of integrate all the RSS feeds that I had set up and integrated in my Google Reader and exported out. And eventually I settled on Feedly, uh, which is available probably in the Android marketplace. I have it on my iPhone. And it also has a browser plugin for Firefox and Chrome. Um, and essentially all it, all it is is just another way to view your RSS feeds. It looks really great on my phone. Um, and it also will import in all your Google RSS feeds into the service. And once Google shuts down, it, it says it will have seamless uh, transition to their own platform. Um, 
So give it a shot. This actually was sent in by one of the state library folks um, who was not able to make it today, but this is Jing. This is free screen capture from your browser. It's basically a little uh, uh, plug-in that you install on your computer and you can record video of what you're doing on the screen. So if you're doing tutorials or if you are planning to you know, do a, a presentation and you want people to actually see the cursor moving and the words showing up in the search bar and the, the stuff opening up, Jing is, is a free option that you can use to, uh, to make those recordings. And it also does screenshots. And I know there are a million screenshot plugins and, and uh, bookmarklets and things out there. But if you've got Jing, you can do both static screenshots and you can also do the, uh, the recordings of you talking and moving around on the, on the web. And the next one that I'm going to do is Evernote. Uh, I chose to do the Evernote mobile. Evernote is available on every platform. Seriously, if there's a platform that the Martians use, they probably have Evernote as well. Um, it, is, it is really, really handy, and I find it especially handy on my phone. I have an Android phone. This is a screenshot from my phone. And you can see with a single button, I can add a quick note in text. I can add a voice memo. So if I need to say something I'm in my car and I don't want to type it out, I can just pull up my phone, click on the voice memo, and it records to Evernote, and then later on I can listen to it. I can take a quick picture, which I do all the time, <coughs> to remind myself to books I want to buy, um, wine that I liked. I have a nice little collection of wine labels in my uh, Evernote. And then the last button there is searching, and Evernote does a fabulous job of searching. Evernote is free and freemium. There is a paid version as well. Hello again. Uh, okay, Rafflecopter. This I took uh, off Facebook from Wichita Public Library, I believe. So Rafflecopter is a way that you can set up a raffle, a sweepstakes. Um, you can put it on your Facebook page for your library or your uh, personal page. You can also embed it in your WordPress and lots of other ways. Any, anywhere basically you can embed HTML, you can put in this little widget for Rafflecopter. And then that allows people to enter your sweepstakes. They can answer questions. Um, so it's a way of adding gamification to your social media site uh, and your website. So I know we all got really excited last year after Eli's talk about kind of these virtual gamification ways. Um, and so this is a really easy way to start that right away. Um, I set up a simple raffle um, just on the Nichols page just so I could see how it worked. And I had four people I've never heard of enter the raffle for a free 3D printed object. And, so I probably should make one winner. You can pick whoever the winner you want. You can also uh, integrate this with your, like your jelly bean contest in your library. So it doesn't have to all be virtual. Next. Okay, so save media. Michael Welch, uh, two, that's how you say it was. Two years ago, mentioned this. Um, and I think it bears being repeated because I know my tech buddy that works for the KU libraries didn't know about this. So when I go and I find a YouTube video that I want to embed into my PowerPoint, rather than having to deal with, you know, shaking internet connections or something like that. Instead of where it says YouTube.com, I put in to the URL bar, SaveMedia.com. This then brings me up to a page where I can download a version of that video. It can be uh, then downloaded in Flash or MPEG. Um, it doesn't do just music. That is a separate plugin and probably something that's not free. Um, because of the copyright type issues. But it's great for when you need to move some media around. I know I've had people where they were having some uh, bad wireless connection, but they want to show their board a video. This is a good way to be able to move that video from the device that you have working internet onto something else, and even put it onto your mobile device, all kinds of things. I'm Patty Poe with Nichols, and this first one is called Gliffy. And it's similar to one that Cynthia showed earlier, but it's, it is free. Of course, you can get a paid version that has more bells and whistles. But the thing that I liked was it had so many options, and it's going to, Sorry. there. Uh, that's the main page. I liked it. It was really clean. It just shows what the options are, like Venn diagrams, if there's anybody out there still doing Boolean and Venn. Um, but there's floor, floor plans, 
There's flow charts. There's every so there's an example of a Venn diagram: the pirate, the ninja, and the zombie. And right there in the middle is the IRS, if you can see it. Um, and then here's a network flow chart. And there's just all the little pieces. You just pull them over. If you're doing a, a layout for your office, like if we were thinking about moving some of our cubicles around, this is an easy tool to just kind of play with the walls and where the chairs are and where the computers are. And the next one, and it's free, Gliffy.com. The next one is Bamboo Dirt. If you haven't seen this, it's just a nice tool. Um, if you're looking for some help, this is a great place to start. You, the, the front page is, I need a digital research tool to like find other researchers in my area, um, manage projects, collaborative write together, um, all kinds of things. So this first example is the collaborative editing. And you just get a list of all the tools that they have available that they have found. And this is a whole bunch of people just like Wikipedia working on this. And then you can limit it by platform, by cost. So for example, Basecamp is in here, but if you limit it to free tools, then you'll see the next screen would be Basecamp goes away because it's not free. But it gives you a really nice overview of all the different things that are out there to help you get your work done. And you can limit it by lots of different ways. So you can find one that works for you. All right, hi everybody. Mickey Colwell with Nepple. Sorry I missed introductions this morning. I was running a little behind. Uh, the app I want to talk about is um, a mobile app that you all probably are familiar with, Google Translate. It's about as close to Star Trek's Universal Translator as we're going to get in 2013. It lets you talk to all kinds of different people, especially if you're at conferences or if you travel outside the country. It allows you to uh, type in uh, text or to copy text from another language and to translate it into your language. Currently, it supports 64 different languages, including um, languages like Chinese, um, different dialects of Chinese, uh, Japanese, uh, Gaelic, uh, not Klingon yet. There's a different app for that. <laughs> but the nice thing about it is that it also gives you uh, some sound. So it will automatically translate for you, all librarians look alike in the dark. <laughs> I'm Laura Devon from Nichols. Um, I told you earlier I handle the money things. We decided to go with Intuit um, Go Payment, which is very much like uh, Square. The reason we chose this was that they will register government entities. If any of you have used Square, it's for an individual. You have to give them your social security number and your background. Um, we also use QuickBooks, so it will also drop into QuickBooks as well. Um, it works on an iPad, it works on your phone. Um, the quick tip would be that you need to make sure the volume is up on whatever device you're using all the way. You can do actually swipe a card. You can just, in, if you do, forgot the reader, you can still use the app and uh, put the numbers in off of their card. You can do that on the computer as well. So that's this one. The next one is because I help so many people, I do tech support for money. Um, and it can get very confusing about what they're trying to tell you. And so we use Lock Me In for um, some of the networks that Dan maintains. And he's given me a very select little list of computers I can access. But for those that aren't on that network of Log Me In or don't have the bandwidth to support it, we use Team Viewer. And so they can call and say they have a problem, give me a session, their, their ID number and their session number, and I, I put that password in, I can see their screen. We can talk on the phone and they can say, no, 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 I'm trying to do this and it won't do. And at least I can see it and we come to a productive conclusion. They usually end those phone calls happy. They're happy. I'm happy I made their day. So um, if you have any sort of discussion you need to see, this is one of the things to use. 
The first one I'm going to talk about is two apps, Wonderlist and Mailbox. Wonderlist is cross-platform on basically any platform. It's a to-do list app. Some others have been mentioned today. It's the one I'm using. I'm still, the jury's still out on it, but it's worked for me better than Remember the Milk or any of the others that are out there. So definitely give it a look. It's beautifully designed, and I think that's why I like it more than any of the others. The big screenshot is um, the Mailbox app. Right now, it is iPhone only and only works with Gmail. The Dropbox has actually bought it, and I anticipate it's going to be developed and put on cross-platforms. Um, cross it is a mail client for your smartphone that works better than any mail app I have ever seen. You know, I use my mail as an inbox, as a to-do list. That's what my inbox is. And this app, I can swipe messages to just archive them immediately. I never want to look at them. I can tell it, send it to me again tomorrow, next week, you know, never. It's just a great way to organize your mail. Um, the next one is just a I general idea about using PowerPoint to put pictures, programming announcements, <coughs> other things, um, news about your library, events in your community, putting that in PowerPoint and then exporting your PowerPoint presentation as images. And you can take those images and attach them to a digital photo frame, to a television that has a <coughs> USB port put on a thumb drive, you have a television display all those images. You can put them as a slideshow on a computer screen. But it's a way to do a digital signboard without buying the actual equipment to do that. So it's a cheap and quick way to make announcements in your library. The next one is on behalf of Nancy Jo. It's Salina. She cannot be here. Um, she said in the tip that when you're trying to look for obituaries, in search engines, in newspapers, and other places, type in the keyword survived by and the survivors, and you can quickly get at some of those obituary information, and that can get you to that information a lot faster. The other one, you know, part of searching is just searching your screen. There's a short keyword shortcut, Control F, that if you've not discovered this, write this down and use it, especially in Express Libraries. You're trying to look for a barcode on a screen of 150 items. You can do control F, type in your library name, or type in the barcode you're looking for, and it will jump immediately to that item or the keyword that you're looking for on the screen. That's a very helpful one. <laughs> one more. Um, this is a video library. This is just a screen, brief screenshot. There's more on this site, but it's someone up at the Alaska State Library in Juneau put together a web page. The link will be part of the um, links list that we're putting out. But basically a web page that links to video libraries across the web that is content you can use in library programming. For free, it's either copyright free, it's Creative Commons, or it's public domain. So if you're ever looking for video to use in programming, this is a great place to start and take a look at. Someone has really gone to a lot of work to put all this together. The link to the blog post that contains all of these tips, the one that Ryan posted from the podium here, that's the URL. So if you want to get a list of the tips with all of the links and, and information, that's where you'll go. And that finishes up our 30 tips in 30 minutes. So thank you very much.